Hello everyone, my name is Trevor. I'm an onboarding engineer here at SkySiv, and in this video we will be introducing the brand new base plate module and going through the workflow of an example calculation. So at the time of this recording, the American, Australian, and European codes are available uh, with more on the way, and additionally more functionality or more customization like stiffeners, shear lugs, and biaxial loading uh, will also be available and is coming soon. So with that said, let's get started and take a look at the brand new module. We'll scroll down on the dashboard here, we'll hit the base plate design, and we'll load up the module here. So similar to other design modules of ours, you want to first select the country's design code that you're going to be using. And then in our case, we want to select which column is going to be supported by the base plate that we're looking at. So we're going to use I shape for this case. And before we get into the inputs and everything like that, um, I'm going to point out a few things. First, you'll notice that the navigation through the design follows in a linear fashion with this top bar guiding you through all those inputs. Second, we have this 3D model here that can be rotated and zoomed in and out so we can see our construction as we're uh, moving along. Third, we have our 2D view here of our system with axis designations. And you'll notice when we go through the, the design that whenever adjustments are made in the inputs, both the 3D version and the 2D depiction are both uh, going to react live to those changes. The last thing I'll point out is this little window here. This is kind of like a summar summarization of everything that's going on with your uh, the materials of your of your design, as well as the co column profiles that you're using, as well and the anchor thicknesses and things like that. So this is just a handy little uh, reference point here. So just like in other uh, design modules we have, we have the project details tab. This is just going to be where you can put in your uh, project details and notes and companies and all that type of stuff. So if we move into the main parts section, this is going to be where we can identify our column section, our base plane information, as well as our foundation information. So for example, we have our column here as a W shape, an 8x48 here, as well as our identified steel material. So again, editing your column, editing your base plate, and then editing your foundation. I'll just make this a round 28 here. 16. Moving on to the anchors, uh, we can just keep chugging away because it's a pretty simple input step here. Just selecting the diameter, the steel material, the ending type, as well as the length. But if we move on to the position of the anchors, there's a few things worth explaining here. Um, the shift values are basically just the offset distance from the side of the uh, side of the base plate to the center line of where the anchor is. So not the clear distance, but the actual center line. So if we wanted to make this 1.5 and 1.5 you'll again see those those adjusted on here as well and then next we have um, the number of anchors left number of anchors right and all these fields basically what this does is between any of the corner anchors that you have shown here you can add uh, a number of anchors so if we add say two to the left and two to the top what it does is is it adds them uh, you can see in the 2d and in the 3d but it adds them at equal spacing in between the corners. So that would be adding uh, anchors in between the corner ones and then uh, using basically these toggles to just toggle on or off any uh, corner anchors that you'd like. So uh, in future updates, we hope to be able to uh, allow users to more easily customize or specifically dictate the, the locations of the anchors uh, for really uh, more bespoke solutions. So continuing in our linear progression, we can indicate the weld strength size and locations of the welds um, between our column and our base plate here. So we can identify the material and then obviously you see top flange, bottom flange, web. These details will depend on whatever section type you're looking at, but um, this is identified by the gray here. If we zoom all the way in and we adjust one of these throats here, we can again see that that changes in the 3D space and in the 2D space as well. So, so lastly, we can take a look at our loads. As I mentioned before, uh, biaxial loading is going to be coming shortly, but it's not actually available in the 1.0 version of our brand new module here. Uh, but in any case, you can add as many load cases as you want, and they can be uh, of, diff of many different load cases, as you can see here. Um, in this case, we have three load cases. And in terms of the visual aspect of it, uh, whatever load case you have your clicker on or whatever row you have the, the is being selected, that's going to show in here. So 
For example, the dead load case, we can see that we have a, a downward axial load of 10 kips. If we change it to this one, it's 15 kips, and as well as this one, um, we have a shear of 15, or excuse me, a shear of nine and an overturning moment of 15 kips. So it gives you a little clear indication of what's what's going on and which um, forces you're looking at. With all of our inputs completed, let's take a look at the design results. So to do that, all you have to do is click on analysis. On this page, we can see a very streamlined display of our demand versus capacity ratios here. And then in each case, specifically, specifically for the anchor checks, we can see, okay, which one of the anchor checks was controlling, especially since there's so many um, that need to be done for each individual anchor. That's a very, very quick overview of the results. And then finally, sticking to our goal of ridding the structural engineering workflow of the black box effect, we have detailed hand calculation reports that are, that are available. So we'll click on this and it'll bring us to our hand calculation report. And obviously this can be printed as a PDF and used as a deliverable or as an HTML or whatever. This is a this is for uh, your verification and your uh, you know your use. So goes through all of the information of your base plate, runs through all of the calculations that you would otherwise need to do by hand um, or show your work by hand in a calc package or whatever that may be. And you'll notice that because we have so many anchors, uh, you know this calculation can get quite long, especially when there's repetitive uh, calculation for the anchors. So what we can do is we can hit close. And if we want to adjust the granularity of the reports, we can go to the settings here, go over to report output, and we can uncheck generate output de uh, detailed report. We can uncheck any strength checks or whatever checks we don't want in our report. So for example, we turn off the detailed part of it, turn off the concrete strength and the welds. Then we hit OK. If we go back to the detailed calculation report, you can see it's much smaller, much shorter. It's just a summary of the checks. So that's going to wrap up our introduction walkthrough video on SkySiv's brand new base plate and anchor design module. So give it a try for yourself. We would love to hear your feedback. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook for more interesting content. Thanks again for watching. We hope to see you guys on the platform soon.